My name is uh, Father Bob Karanja Ireri. I am the current superior of the Order of St. Augustine in Kenya. In a special way, we are celebrating the feast day of our founder father, who is St. Augustine. St. Augustine is known with the baptismal name Aurelius Augustine. He was born in a village town called Tagaste in North Africa, the current day Algeria. He was born on 13 November 354 AD. The mother of St. Augustine was called Monica, and the father was called Patricius or Patrick in English. His mother was a devout Catholic, and she was a very prayerful woman, while his father was a pagan and worked with the municipal council of Tagaste. St. Augustine had a brother called Navigius, and also in some texts we read that he had a sister called Perpetua. Just like another kid or child, St. Augustine, when he reached of age, he was taken to primary school in Tagaste. And we understand that in the primary school, though St. Augustine could capture what they were being taught very well, because of, his, of the love of football, he used to escape from class to go and play football. And in those days, football would not be the same as we are thinking today because, as you remember, for those who are older, when we were young, we used to make our own balls with the papers and we tie with some ropes and we make something round, which was a bit heavy, not like the one we have today. And we used to play it as our football. So he loved football. And this one, even many young people can identify with because today we have so many people who love football. So, and even they have their teams, which is a support. Because of the love of football, Augustine would be late in class and uh, he would be flogged. Those days, like in the days of our older ones, also we, when we remember, uh, if you make a mistake in school or you commit a crime, uh, one way was corporal punishment those days. So Augustine loved football but hated to be flogged. So in fact, we would say that the first prayer Augustine learned because he could see what his mother was doing, when she was praying, it would be a prayer like we can paraphrase to say that Augustine would pray in the morning, Oh God, help me not to be beaten in school today. Because he really hated being flogged, but he loved football. In school, they were taught about the history, the stories and plays of the Greece and Rome. And in those days, uh, Rome and in Greece, there was a worship of many gods and goddesses. So in that way, Agassin was introduced to these stories and they were involving mostly stories of fornications and adulteries of gods and goddesses. And this kind of literature corrupted Agassin's mind. We hear that he used to steal money at home to go and pay so that he could watch these, what we can call movies by then, but not movies like as we have them today, because uh, those days it was acting on stage. You know, today you find people going maybe to see a video or a movie in a TV box or something. But those days it was acting real. So these things corrupted Augustine from when he was young. While Monica was very prayerful and trying to teach him many things about God and teaching him about Jesus Christ and about the dangers of sin. Because Monica always taught Augustine that after this world, when we go to the other side, there shall be a judgment. And those who have committed sin will go to hell, and those who are good and done according to the will of God will go to heaven. So besides the teachings from Monica, Augustine got corrupted by this. After once, after primary school, he excelled very well because he was very gifted academically. In fact, he was a genius. So he excelled well, and he went. He was taken to a secondary school, just like any other young man. But he was taken away from home in a place called Mandaura. And now that it was away from home, as a young person, Augustine found a new type of freedom in the sense that he could now live his life and do whatever he would like to do in school as they are being guided by teachers, although he was also rebellious because he joined a, a bad company in the school. And he was not very well known in terms of morality and behavior, although he was still excelling very well. So Agassin did a secondary school and uh, he was struggling as he joined the body company to strive to be loved and to love. But instead, what he called love by then turned to be lust. Agassin finished secondary school when he was 16 years old. His father did not have money 
for university, just as it happens with most of our young people. That's Agassini had to wait for one year. During the one year he stayed at home, things moved from bad to worse in terms of his behavior and the company he was keeping. In fact, at that time, it was so difficult for the mother, Monica, because Monica could try to warn Agassini against his bad behavior and she could not listen. At one point, we are told they even stole pears, you know, the fruits called pears, from somebody's farm, not because they were hungry, but just for the sake of stealing. They stole and drew them to another person's pigs. So Augustine kind of was enjoying kind of doing evil because from the beginning, he was introduced to this corruption, especially in the area of sexuality. At the age of 17 years, Augustine was sponsored by somebody called Romanus, and he was at last able to join university. He was uh, uh, he joined Carthage University, which is a party city in North Africa, with all sorts of... Uh, this city was full of people from all over the world and full of wickedness. Here, Augustine had what young people can call complete freedom in the sense of doing whatever he would have liked to do. He had mistresses. He had uh, friends who were even more of gangs in the university. And at last, he joined a cult in the university. This cult was called Manichians. And for Manichians, they believed that within the human person, there are two forces which are fighting, the light and darkness. And when we commit sin, it means that the darkness has overpowered the light. And when we do something good or virtuous, it implies that the light has overcome the darkness. So according to Manichaeans, we do not need to feel guilty about our sinfulness because it's not our wish, it's the, the two forces which are fighting within the human person. You can imagine how this is attractive to young people. So Agassin was attracted by this, where he can commit sin without any guilt and believing that he is not res responsible for his sinfulness. But uh, with God's help, besides all these troubles, and with the prayer of the mother Monica, Augustine was able to uh, complete his uh, uh, university. Uh, unfortunately, he, did not, uh, he was not employed immediately. He did not get any job. And for that reason, he went back home at Tagaste from Carthage. And at home, he joined the mother again at their home. And at one point, it is said when the mother in, uh, invited them to pray as she, they used to, Augustine started laughing at uh, the mother. Because Agassin told the mother, I do not believe in those prayers or in those kind of things you are talking about. Me, I no longer believe in those things. As you remember, he joined already the cult of the Manichaeans. So Monica was so uh, uh, disappointed with the behavior of Agustin. And we hear at one point, he just chased Agustin away from the house. But later on, as you know, with our mothers, our mothers will correct us and they will still bring us back. So they reconciled with the son and were able to move on. So after... Agassini, realizing he has not got a job, he decided to start his own school. So he started his own school at Tagaste. And unfortunately, Monica heard that Agassini was mocking the faith of the young children, of the pupils, in God and in Jesus. So Monica rebuked Agassini for this behavior. And because of the way Agassini was behaving, actually at one point, Monica went to a certain bishop and requested if the bishop could help to talk to Augustine so that Augustine could uh, at least change his way of life and be able to be baptized and be able to accept the Catholic faith. But uh, the bishop told Monica that he is so proud for the moment. Let us give him time. And then the bishop commented because Monica was in tears and she used to go even to the church and lay down prostrate and even wet the floor of the church with her tears, crying for the son. So the bishop commented when she saw the sons, uh, the tears of Monica, that a son of such tears will never get lost. And for sure, at the end of the story, we come to realize that this came to be fulfilled. So after Augustine realized things were not working so well in Tagaste, he decided to go and look for a job in his former university where he studied in Carthage. So he went back again to this city. And when we went back to Carthage uh, uh, to look for the job, he got a job in the university where he had standed, and he started teaching there. But unfortunately, the students were unruly, and uh, there were a lot of strikes in the university, just as it happens with most of our universities here in Kenya. So there was one strike after another. So after one strike, uh, after they begin the course, midway there is a strike, and then they have to begin again the next time, and this disturbed Augustine because he could not be able to function much. With this then, he was told by his friends that uh, the students in Rome are well behaved. So he decided to try his luck to go to Rome. 
And as he prepared to go to Rome, uh, in one way or another, as our mothers are, Monica and Dorinde come to know that St. Augustine was planning to, uh, planning to leave Africa and to go to Rome. So by the time they were waiting for the ship, uh, Augustine was surprised to realize that the mother was there. And Monica told Augustine that she is not comfortable with her with him going to Rome, but if he has to go, they have to go together. So uh, Augustine did not like that idea because he was already having a mistress. And later on, they even got a child who is called the Odatus, the gift of God, though they were not really legally married. And she lived with this, he lived with this mistress even for 19 years. So uh, Augustine did not want the idea of going with the mother to Rome, especially because also of his behavior and the way the mother kept on insisting on his conversion. So uh, by good luck, according to his own calculations, there was a chapel for the, those who are traveling along the, uh, the, the sea, the Mediterranean Sea. There was a small church. And uh, Agassi knew the mother li- loves uh, to pray. So the Agassi said to the mother, why don't you, mom, go and pray there? And uh, when the ship comes, because they are saying it's far away, I will call you so that we travel. And Monica accepted and went to pray, not knowing that the ship was just near. And they boarded and they left. And when men- Monica came out of the chapel, Agassin and Dorinda left to Rome. Later on, Monica, as you know, with our mothers, they never give up. She was still able to find her way and to look for her son in Rome and later on in Milan. So going to Rome, yes, it's true. The students were behaved and he got a job. But unfortunately, in Rome, they used to pay at the end of the year. So at the end of the year, unfortunately, after all the teachings, the students left Augustine and none of them paid. So he was left a poor man. And then later on, he was advised that there is a position of professor in the University of Milan. And uh, he decided to move from Rome to Milan. So he moved to Milan. And in Milan, as he was teaching there, is when he encountered this great bishop called Ambrose. Ambrose was an expert in speech, you know, in rhetorics. Yeah? So Augustine liked this area because he was also a rhetorist. So he could go to listen to Ambrose, not because he wanted to hear the word of God, but because he wanted to at least listen to the parts of speech and how uh, Ambrose chooses his diction and how he addresses his issues. So he could just like the way Andrew, uh, Ambrose was speaking, but he was not bothered about the message. But slowly as he continued listening to Bishop Ambrose, he started feeling some fire within him. He started fe- understanding the things he could not understand before about the Bible. As Ambro- Ambrose explained the different parts of the Bible, Agassin came to realize that the Bible is not just a correction of stories or just some wordings, but it is a living word and which has an effect on a human person when we have a listening ear. And thank God, slowly, with the preaching of Ambrose, later on the mother arrived and they were together with the son again. We know that in the to cut just the wrong story short, we know that later on Augustine started slowly being interested with the things to do with the faith. And slowly he started discovering that he cannot do much on Gopha, even with his education, without God. And we remember that time when he had an experience whereby in the garden, whereby he had even a child crying and t- saying, take and read, take and read. And he took the Bible and read the letter to the Romans. And uh, after he heard what Paul is saying there about uh, that we are not going to find our happiness and joys in uh, debaucheries, in uh, adultery, in uh, all sorts of behaviors and drunkenness, but rather we, ha- we can only find that in the grace of God and through Jesus Christ. At last, Augustine was converted. And uh, on the Easter Vigil, 25th April, 387, Augustine, his son and Deodatus, and Alepius, his friend, together with others, were baptized by Bishop Ambrose. After that, when the mother died, because the father had already died in Africa, when the mother died, Augustine, uh, after they buried her according to her wish uh, there, because she wished that it's not a must she be brought to be buried back in Africa, but she only requested Augustine to remember her on the altar of the Lord when Augustine becomes a priest. So after the death of the mother, Augustine came back to Africa he formed a community based on the first community, uh, Christian community, as we read in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 32 to 34. They spent days in this community praying, working, standing the word of God, 
and is serving the people. In fact, this was the birth of what we call now today in the world, the Order of St. Augustine, which is serving people in more than 50 countries throughout the world, and which is in fact responsible for bringing Christianity to Kenya through the martyrs of Mombasa, because there were Augustinians who came from Portugal, accompanying people like Pascal da Gama in the explorations, and they were the first ones to come in Mombasa and to be martyred, though most of the documents got lost due to what happened later when the Arabs came and when the, there was a destruction of anything which resembled Christianity. So in his life, Agassin was a great sinner, we can say. He was a great genius, a great lover, and a great saint. He wrote, we are told he wrote 300 books, 270 letters, some of them book length, and transcriptions of 800 of his sermons are still intact. Agassin died in 430 AD. And in a summary, we can just say, summarize the Agostinian spirituality or what he has left to us as uh, something we can depend on in order to be able to reach the kingdom of God. So there are three points which are very important in the Agostinian spirituality. The first one is love for God and neighbor. So for St. Augustine, love should be at the center of Christian life because God himself is love. And St. Augustine, when he talks about love of God and neighbor, he says that in the hierarchy of the importance of love, the love of God comes first. But in the hierarchy of practice, the love of neighbor comes first because we love God through our neighbor. The second aspect which is important and necessary in the Augustinian spirituality is that it is an honest search for the truth. Augustine loved the truth and he struggled throughout his life to know the truth because the mother had told him that Jesus Christ is the truth. So he continues to search for the truth in books, in wherever he could find, and at last he came to realize that with a honest search, the truth is deep within ourselves. As he exclaimed and said, Oh God, you are so close to me than I am to myself. And he came to realize that the truth can only be discovered, first of all, when we understand we are created in the image of God and his likeness. And the more we come to know about ourselves, the more we come to know about God. As St. Augustine said, Oh God, let me know myself that I may know you. The third one is sharing with others in community. Augustine emphasizes on community living, and that's why he formed communities, because he formed this after uh, imitating the Trinitarian community. For St. Augustine, to live in a community is a one way of imitating our Trinitarian God, because God is one in three persons. So the more we are able to live at peace and to respect each other and to focus on God, and to search for the truth together as a community, the more we are also maybe imitating our God according to St. Augustine. Now, I, I conclude this presentation by presenting five challenges which St. Augustine faced and how he handled them so that they may say something or they may give some little insight to our youth especially. So the first challenge St. Augustine faced was peer pressure. Augustine could do what was forbidden in order to please her, his peers. Later, he discovered that he is created to do what pleases God and shun all what is against the laws of God. Second, St. Augustine ended a challenge of lack of self-control. Later, Augustine, especially, especially in matters of sexuality and temperament. And in our society today, we realize that especially with the young people, there is a sense in which there is lack of self-control. And uh, as Father Bob, I always say that it is normal to have feeling, feelings, but rather abnormality begins when feelings have you. So it is a high time. We also pray for young people, just as Augustine suffered this challenge of lack of self-control, because self-control is a gift of the Holy Spirit as he came to discover later that they could be able to be near God and be able to receive this gift. So St. Augustine discovered that true love comes from God and only the faith in God and the guidance by the Holy Spirit that can help us to have self-control. That, St. Augustine suffered from pride. He was so proud because especially of his achievements and he could not find even the need for God. 
he thought that he is self-sufficient with whatever he had because at some point he was having all the basic needs he needed. He was uh, having big positions. He was having power. So at one point he, saw, he thought that he is self-contained and he does not need any other help from anyone. But later in life, as he experienced the emptiness of life about the vanity of all the things of this world, he discovered humility. For St. Augustine, humility comes from the root word humus. Humus means ground or soil. So he says that humility means, when we, we talk of humility, we are talking of recognizing that we are soil, we are ground. And if we are ground, we need help from God. We need assistance for us to be able to produce anything because it's God who gives life. So as human beings, uh, according to him in humility, when we discover that we are weak and wounded, we are just soil, then we discover we need God in our lives besides our positions, besides our properties, besides our maybe education and all that. The fourth one, the challenge Augustine faced is the challenge of poverty, like it has happens with many of our young people also. Agassin, as we have heard, was not born in a rich family. So he, stay, he even stayed at home for one whole year after secondary school for lack of school fees. He did, he did not also find employment after his education, as many people are finding it today. After the education, even university or college, they, it's difficult to find employment. So what did Agassin do about this? Later, he started, he started to start his own school in the village. So he embroiled himself and he worked hard to earn his living. So maybe to the young people today, as they are looking for jobs, especially during this period of the pandemic, of the COVID-19 pandemic, when many factories have closed and all that, and it's difficult to get jobs, from St. Augustine, maybe he's saying to them, try to think a little bit and use the resources which God has given you, and you can find yourself employing yourself. And there are many young people who have done that, even during this period of the pandemic. They have innovated, they have been innovative, and uh, they have occupied themselves in a useful way, and they, they are helping themselves, even helping other people and even employing other people. The last but not the least challenge Augustine faced, which I, I would wish to share today, is idleness. Augustine was idle when he could not go to school. In the beginning, he handled idleness by doing all sorts of immorality. But later, he learned to organize his time well and to make use of it in a productive way. It is also a call to the young people who are idle, as we were taught in the early days by our teachers and even by our Sunday school teachers, that idle mind is the devil's workshop. So whenever we are idle is when we start gossiping other people. Whenever we are idle is when we get points of conflict with others. Whenever we are idle is when we start becoming depressed. Whenever we are idle is when we start thinking on maybe trying on drugs, maybe, or trying on alcohol and other things. Idleness is not a good thing for a young person. And Augustine learned that through example. I conclude this presentation as we are joyful celebrating our Father, Holy Father St. Augustine with a short prayer of Augustine. And it goes like this. Holy Augustine, sinner and saint, pray for us sinners. Help us to follow your way. Make us know the truth of the words you spoke to God. Late have I loved you, O oh, beauty so ancient and so new. Late have I loved you. You have made us for yourself, O oh Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Amen. We can also have some few quotes from St. Augustine. St. Augustine said that the one who created you without yourself will not save you without yourself. He also said that it's better to be a cripple on the right path than to be a great runner on the wrong path. He also said, prayed to God and said to God, Oh God, you are closer to me than I am to myself. St. Augustine also asked God, Oh God, my, the door of my soul is so small, is so little. Make it larger by your entering. St. Augustine lived there after his conversion, a community life. He became a priest. He became a, a, a bishop in Hippo. And today, the march of the doctrine, which we get from the Catholic Church, especially the Catechism, as a great contribution from this great saint, this great genius. What is Agassi saying to all of us? He is saying for you who think conversion is impossible, 
for you who see the word of God being senseless and being maybe a correction of stories in the Bible, like Hassan is saying to you, think a little bit further and realize that the word of God is alive. And we need, first of all, to believe in God in order to understand. We have to begin with the belief, with the faith, in order to understand. The moment we struggle, first of all, to understand, uh, in order to believe, it becomes an impossibility. But when we believe in God, then we are able also slowly to be guided and to understand his word. Long live St. Augustine, long live the order of St. Augustine. Once more, as I said, my names are Father Bob Karanja Ireri. I am the current superior of the Order of St. Augustine in Kenya. And uh, in the Order of St. Augustine in Kenya, we are running different parishes and also formation houses and also preaching the word of God in different ways, even in uh, institutions, because Augustine was very well known, especially in the area of Sunday. So we also have some of our brothers who are teaching in the universities and in other uh, levels of education. Thank you. Of education.